Greetings, Chikarmi, and welcome to your podcast a go go. I'm director of fun, Mike Quackenbush, coming to you from Santa Neptune, ready to prescribe another week's dose of Chikara goodness to you. This week on the Go-Go, we're going to talk about Challenge of the Immortals. It's our season-long round-robin tournament, and it started during our Mid-Atlantic Swing back in the month of March. In all, 10 quartets are vying not just for immortality, but so that each member of the team can win a golden opportunity at season's end. And in this particular match, we're seeing two members of the BDK squad, Jakob Hammermeyer and Pinky Sanchez, lock up with two members of Ultramantis Black's Arcane Horde. It's Obarian and Kodama, the demons, the Batiri, in tag team action from our Norfolk stop, Alter Egos. Starting hot and heavy here. The Batiri absolutely with tag team uh, experience not here. Right, and I was going to mention that as well. Uh, Batiri, I think, is going to control the early onset of this contest just because their longevity as a team. And uh, just as we saw Jakob was the legal man before, both he and Pinky went to the outside. That's just as good as a hand-to-hand -hand tag with our rule system. I Double promise, true. I will not say it all the time, but we do have a lot of tag team matches on the show. And while this might be your first Chikara event, this may not be your first Chikara match. Or a match later, maybe it not be your first Chikara match. And Scoop Slam now trying to, to dictate the pace of the match here. As Yaka barks orders at Pinky from the outside, just get him. No real general other information other than get him. But do not discount Pinky Sanchez, maybe one of the most unpredictable wrestlers in all of the world. I defy anyone to know what's going on in that young man's head. That's a very nice way of calling the annoying girl uh, nice. So, you know how the, the oh, he's, he's a very unpredictable wrestler. Pinky Sanchez, like we said, I would want to be a part of him. I don't even know how Jakob keeps him around, but I think Jakob likes having a yes man, as it were, in his version of the BDK. Well, I have recently gotten a chance to talk with Jakob a little bit more, and he's chosen the members of his new BDK for a very specific reason. He sees something in them. He sees an untapped potential in them. He feels as though these disparate personalities all working together will be one cohesive unit. Mm -hmm. But right now, working as a cohesive unit is the dudes of the arcane horde. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a real field fan, a real general says a lot with a little, and Jakob, not so much. Always the guy, the guy barking orders and carrying on, you know what I mean? It's hard to respect that guy. It's hard to take him seriously. Uppercut now by Obarian. And uh, last night, Obarian and Kodama teamed up with their other Arcane Horde members, uh, Team Captain Ultramantis Black, an unlikely fan favorite in Oleg the Usurper. Yeah, but interesting uh, course of events in Gibsonville last night and out on a limb. You can find that at ChikaraPro.com. Enjoy as, enjoyed as much as the crowd did last night, but the, uh, the Arcane Horde, by virtue of what went on last night in Gibsonville, are 0 for 1 in Challenge of the Immortals competition. This is their second opportunity to pick up a point. 
That's right. And again, we've got a long way to go as the Challenge of the Immortals works as of the 10 teams. Each one is going to face one of the other nine teams twice. Double round robin. That's right. So uh, one loss is not bad. Two losses right out of the gate is a tough uh, yep. deficit to begin to come overcome. Back from. Yeah. to come back from. And we saw now Jakob and Pinky working together. A little double team action there. Pinky scored with that body scissors into a DDT. Very innovative. You know, say what you will about Pinky Sanchez. We don't have enough time or tape or recording with here. We've things. said enough, I think. I think so. Uh, but he is a great wrestler in the ring. Wiley. Right, uh, and he is some someone that people underestimate in the ring. They yes, look at him, true. the way he carries himself and so forth, and they're just like, I got this guy. Right. And he is a, a bit of a spoiler and has been a spoiler in the past. He's a former cybernetic Oh, yes, that's true. With the dastardly guys of Carpenter Ant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Feels like a lifetime ago, does it not? I was regaling people with my knowledge of professional wrestling. Where did Bret Hart win his first uh, world title? Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, October 12, 1992. I was chided by my car mates today for knowing that information. Really? Well, don't yes. tell them I know it. Then. Oh, I boy. I don't want to get chided as well. <laughs> my mother once told me if I spent as much time on uh, uh, wrestling facts and knowledge, if I, if I used that brain space, I'd probably have straight A's. And, uh, I, I, think not. I think it's better to have B minuses. Yeah, and no. Be above know, above average minus. Right. Teams. To know exactly uh, who Mike Sanders is. Speaking of being above average. <laughs> that was a little after my time. Oh really? But that, that that 91, 92, 93, 94, 95 run. That was like that was that was the twilight of my of my wrestling knowledge intake. But right now, Jakob Hermeyer intaking a couple elbows to the gut. Very a handful of hair possibly there. Special K, Kevin Burney's to get in there and check that out. Special K? Yeah, He was in that faction. K Dizzle? King of Honor? Oh. Was he uh, Cloudy? He was one of he was uh, one of them. I think he was uh, I think he was King of Oh. Right now BDK. We're gonna get great together as a team. You know, they saw the opening earlier, uh Grimble strike down the referee's back, and they have been able to control this contest, and that's exactly what they need to do. They cannot let Ovarian make the tag. If Kodama the freshman gets in there. Uh, he just gonna run wild and tear these guys apart. Yes, sure. me. My depth perception is not what it used to be, but it seems like this ring might be a little bigger than some of the guys are, are used to as well here today in Norfolk. Well, isn't the saying everything's bigger in Norfolk? I believe yes, yes, yes. Virginia's the love. Virginia, live for your die. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Wow. Interesting offense, but he put him in, in the in the vicinity of his own corner there. And Pinky wisely, not even giving Ovarian the chance to attempt the tag, kicked Kodama off the apron and is continuing. Very interesting knee pad that Pinky Sanchez is wearing there. Oh, he misses that, that throw where he just kind of projects his buttocks in your general neighborhood. Power slam by Ovarian. Nicely done. And this is the opportunity that we discussed. This is the opportunity that he needs. This is the opportunity that he has to take advantage of. Make the tag to Kodama, get him in there. Or this one's going to be over pretty quickly. We saw Ovarian uh, employ that power slam last night to help turn the tide for his oh, yeah. team. Impressive. Ultimately not resulting in a victory, but again, turning the tide. He's locked eyes with his partner. Tags in Kodama, tags in Yanko. We've got two fresh men in there. And like I said, Kodama like a house of fire here. Barking orders from afar. Face first onto the mat. And nicely done with the neck breaker. And the crowd comes alive with the sound of neck breakers here in Norfolk. One time to say it well. Irish oh, follows him up. Oh, but Yaka's right behind him. Not on the trail. Oh, nicely done. Diamond Cutter connects. Yeah, that's right, Diamond Cutter. Johnny Ace would hate to hear that. You thought it was going to be right? No. Thank you. Oh, wait a second. Pinky there. It just in blatant disregard. Just coming right in. Referee, get one of these guys out of the ring. There was no tag. Yeah, really. Maybe with his hands full here, not used this kind of action here. Now, now Pinky, or Jakob's barking. And, uh, oh, Bryce, they did this last night. Watch this. this oh, my goodness. 
double stomp off Oberian to Kodabo with a neck breaker as the exclamation point. Ooh, last possible second there. I thought for sure that was it. I wonder if the referee even knows who the legal man is at this moment. No, I uh, do. You do? I do. Who is it? It's those two right there. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one from the BDK and the one from the Eric That's correct. Yep. Jakob getting ready for that punch. He tried it last night. It backfired. Oh, work, did he? Score. A double backfire there. Nobody home now. The two of them in the corner pushing him out of the way. Oh, and the big boss eats the big knee. Red Rob. Why are they going to pin someone here? Well, because Jakob's not the legal man. They know as well. Looking for that pump kick. Jakob in the foot. Oh, caught him on the way down. And one point for the RK Horde in the challenge of the Immortals. There you just saw the Arcane Horde pick up one point over the BDK in our double round robin tournament, the Challenge of the Immortals. And of course you saw Jakob Hammermeyer, the star of Thursdays on the Throne, a new addition to our weekly lineup right here on our official YouTube channel. Subscribe now and never miss one of Bryce's event centers, never miss a Top 5 Tuesday, and never miss another podcast to go-go. And if you want to make sure you don't miss our next swing through the Mid-Atlantic States, we're going to be back in North Carolina and Virginia at the end of September. Tickets are already on sale. Head over to ChikaraPro.com and pick up yours now. And then head back here next Monday for another edition of the podcast, A Go-Go.